So this is the third practice for uh, this lesson. <clears throat> All right, and this is the last practice you're gonna have. Um, after this, this will be there'll be a formative on Friday. Well, that would be today, um, and then the review will be also on Friday, and then review on Monday, and then test on Tuesday. All right, here we go. So again, we're doing transformations. There are two of them. I'm gonna list them here. You got one and two. Let's make this a little bigger. Sorry about the dog barking in the background. So the first one, you're gonna go to the left by two, and the other one, so that's number one, and number two, you're gonna go up by two. Okay, technically you should say horizontal shift to the left by two and vertical shift to the up by uh, two, but that's good enough. All right, here we go. We got two transformations here, that's an ugly two. There we go. So the first one is a horizontal. Uh, that is a horizontal compression by two. Uh, and number two is a vertical shift going down by two. All right. Number three, we have three things going on. There's one, two, and three. The first one is a reflection over the x-axis. Uh, number two is a vertical sh stretch. by two. And then number three is a horizontal shift to the right by two. Number four, there are three things going on. Here's one, two, and three. So the first one is a vertical stretch by two. The second one is a reflection over the y-axis, because it's inside the parentheses. And number three is a horizontal stretch by two. All right, and those are the transformations. Next, we're given a graph here. So we want to first determine the, func the period of the function. So if we start right in the middle of the graph, and do, this would be a sine function. You don't need to know that right now, but it ends right there. And that means the period is gonna be four pi. <clears throat> All right, the maximum value is the, is the peak, which is at six. The minimum is the valley, which is at negative two. The amplitude is the, the total distance between the top, the, the valley and the peak, which would be eight in this case, divided by two is four. Okay, also we know that because if this is the midline, oh, let's change that color, make it red. Here's the midline of our graph, which we'll get to in part E. And the distance between the midline and the peak and the midline and the valley are both four. Okay, so that's the amplitude. And then the midline itself is going to be y equals <clears throat> 2. Okay, and those are all the uh, pieces for number 5. All right, number 6. Okay, the first thing you have to do for number 6, usually for these kind of problems, we had just basic denominators. In this case, there's a quadratic in one of the denominators, so we're going to factor this. If you factor it, it's going to be x uh, plus 5 x minus 1. Okay, so if we have our little chart that we've had in the past, we have x plus 5, we have x minus 1, and we have x plus 5 times x minus 1. So the first piece is missing an x minus 1, the second piece is missing an x plus 5, and the third piece has all both of them, so it doesn't need anything. So I can just technically multiply it by one, but I don't need to. Okay, so on the top part, we have six times x minus one equals one times x plus five plus one times one. And then because we have a common denominators now, we can get rid of those denominators altogether. 
So we, we do our distributive property. 6 times x is 6x minus 6 equals x plus 5 plus 1. <clears throat> okay. We're going to add the 6 from here to the other side. We're going to subtract this x. So we're going to get 5x is equal to 12. Okay. And then uh, we're going to divide both sides by 5. So x will equal 12 over 5. Okay. Now you can also do the um, uh, determine the denominators that cannot work. Okay, um, that would be taking the denominators that we have. We have x minus one and x plus five, setting them both equal to zero. So x cannot equal positive one or negative five. And since none of those values are our answer, our answer will work. All right. Next, we have our radical equation. So we're going to square both sides. That means we're going to make the x minus 4 multiply it by itself. So we have 2x plus 7 because the, oops, that's on the 7. The squared and the squared go away equals x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x again. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. <clears throat> I'm going to subtract the 2x and the 7 to the right-hand side because I don't want to make my x squared term into a negative. So I have x squared. going to give you minus 10x um, plus 9 equals 0. I factor this. I'm going to get x minus 9 and x minus 1. So I get x equals 9 and 1. Okay. So now i got to put these values back into our equation. So if I go 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 7 is going to give you 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And 9 minus 4 is also 5. So this one checks out. Put in 1, so I have 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 7 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Well, 3 and negative 3 are not the same thing, so that one does not work. So there we go. Only x equals 9 is our answer. So you got to make sure you check your answers to make sure they do work. All right. Last one. We have Ann and Bob. So we have Ann and Bob. Okay, they are completing a job. We don't know what the job is, it's just a job. So job and time. Okay, and then they're together as well. So Anne can complete eight jobs in three hours, whereas Bob can complete ten jobs in seven hours. I don't know how, if they work together, will it take them to complete 45 jobs? Okay, so we again make our little chart. We have three, we have seven, we have X. Okay, so the 3 is missing in 7 and an x, the 7 is missing 3 and an x, and the x is missing 3 times 7, which is 21. So we multiply those to the top. So we got, here we've got, let's make this, we got 7x, we've got 3x, we have 21. So 8 times 7 is going to give you 56, plus 3 times 10 is going to be 30x. And then 21 times 45, let's get the handy dandy calculator out, you get 945. Okay, we combine the like terms of 56 plus 30 is going to be 86x equals 945, and divide both sides by 86. So 945 divided by 86, x will equal 10.99. There you go. And that is it. All right. Well, good luck on the formative. Uh, and please make sure you're doing the reviews and getting ready for the test on Tuesday.